We're back to the Neil Haley Show and also the Media Giant Effect. And I'm excited to welcome the CEO of Super Human Prospecting, Ryan Paris. Ryan, thanks for calling and, and joining the show. And you know, what? when I think about specifically enough prospecting, I think it's the biggest thing in 2023 challenges. There's two challenges meeting every business owner, social media management, where they literally don't have people to find to do it. And then people who do prospect so that their marketing is stuck because they don't have get the leads. And once they do get the leads, they're not prospecting those leads in the pipeline. Would you agree, Ryan? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, it's all about effort and output and doing it in a quality way so that it generates results. So how did you get started in this? Are you a sales guy to start with? Is that kind of your background? Yeah, I was... Uh... I was a sales guy, you know, you know, it's funny, like uh, my, my original background, um, I grew up, uh, you know, on eBay and some of those like emerging platforms. And I was always just wheeling and dealing, you know, I was trying to figure out how to sell like a race car helmet or like a, like my mom's toaster, you know, that she would get really pissed at me for, <laughs> but I would wanted to figure out how to create messaging that would connect with people. And so that's originally kind of some of the, the roots of my sales. And I got into sales right after college and really saw that my, my ability to, to talk to strangers, um, it just came natural. But I got taught this way, you know, that was outdated, aggressive, kind of used car salesman type. Yeah. And I wanted to translate that to the 21st century when I started my business. And, and that's where a lot of the ideas came from. It was a passion for selling and doing it in a way that made it a good experience for the folks that we were talking to, you know, but also yielded results. So you think about specifically enough the used car salesman, the days of selling and churning and burning just doesn't work anymore. The churn burn ticks people off and you lose a lot of customers through churning and burning, right? And not yeah, and absolutely. getting them upset, right? It's about, it's, it's a like for like society now. You can't go ahead and think, I'm going to go bother all these people with telemarketers and different things like that and not provide value and think that you're going to continue to build your customer base. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, and one of the things that we preach here is we have this, this ph philosophy that applies to more than just sales, but specifically with sales, it's uh, we have this H to H methodology or human to human. And the, and the idea is that we are trying to maximize performance without ever losing trust with the people that we're speaking with, whether that's internal team members or just, you know, prospects that we're, that we're reaching out to. So what that basically means and, you know, sales and, and practical application is that when we are engaging with someone, obviously we want to increase our and speed up our sales cycle, but that doesn't always come to fruition because they might not be ready. So we have to back off, allow them to breathe, you know, and, and maybe set them into a nurture campaign and just build that relationship. And then that can come back to us later. If we're always focused on the appointment, we're always focused on the now, you know, we can cut those relationships short and, you know, churn people out, as you say, without really having that nurturing aspect that can uh, bear fruit later. We're seeing this on LinkedIn right now, where people are sending, they created these drip campaigns when ultimately LinkedIn was not meant to be a drip campaign in that way, where you're literally using AI to have conversations with people and the relationship is not developing. And then people lose trust of why that person next to them have done that. It does work, but ultimately I think it's a churn burn thing too. So tell us specifically about what makes you guys different. And especially I guess being able to get a sales team for somebody is huge because a lot of times they can't afford it. And then when they hire telemarketers and sometimes they're overseas as well, they really tick off the potential customer or client. Absolutely. Well, first of all, all of our team members are, are US based. You know, they have the American accent. They're either college educated or have prior sales experience. They have the ability to articulate and really have a, a sales development conversation with somebody. And so I think that's number one. Number, number two is that we have our own cold calling uh, and script methodology that our whole entire team is trained on. They have to go through a video course, training tests, role plays, those types of things in order to go out and speak to prospects uh, so that we know that there's quality conversation going on. And lastly, it would be, you know, our process. We've been doing this for six years now. Our whole, our whole uh, outsourcing service is automated. So we can upload data 
train our team through the scripts we write and and the sales and product training get them calling once there's leads they can you know be zapped right into any crm or into email into a, a reporting tool that makes it really easy to view the analytics to get feedback and continuously improve and you're definitely a business to business company right what kind of business do you work with yeah we're primarily business to business about 95 percent is b2b we do have some uh b2c you know, we work in the remodeling space a little bit uh, with some lead generation there, uh, but we work all over the place. Let's say our top companies we work with or industries we work with right now are SaaS, manufacturing, commercial insurance, and, and marketing, uh, but we also work with a wide range of other types of services. Uh, we work with cannabis, you know, we've worked in some distribution, you know, e-commerce, uh, and it's really about, you know, one of the interesting things about that question is, Sometimes when we have a lot of experience or work with companies that similar companies that come to us, it can get harder because that means the market is a bit more saturated. We're kind of like a, a micro sample of the marketplace. But when we get something that's unique, right? Like one time this summer, um, we had we had gotten a, a company who they provide power generators to farm equipment retailers. Okay. It was like the weirdest thing ever. And that we blew it out of the park. It's like absolutely crushed that. And they're still with us today, you know, but it's like, we had never done anything like that before. So it's what like- What do you think you know, is the best way, like you guys, and you're, without t giving away your secret sauce and prospecting, but I think everyone ha has tried every prospecting method in the world. But I think that you do is you don't want it to be like the used car salesman thing. Are, are you using a lot of leads from databases? Are you taking leads from their databases? Or are you doing a mixture of all to go out and call? places so because we're a service you know we're, we're open and flexible we can kind of customize the projects and campaigns for our clients so they if they provide us a list uh we can work with that and we'll upload it through our compliance software so that we know that we're all you know following the dnc and and the telemarketing sales rule but we can also develop lead lists as well we have a full-time team of four market researchers that custom curate lists every single month using multiple sources so there's a lot the of ways lists that we can are that. more powerful than ultimately trusting specifically enough, just, you know, creating these lists, seeing who the decision makers are and always updating it. Cause you can have a database that's just dead, right? Dead in the water or use LinkedIn and tick people off. Cause how important are LinkedIn? I, I'm, if you do guys do use uh, a program, like I said, with uh, LinkedIn, uh, uh, drip campaigns. I, I, I just, I've talked to so many clients say they don't like it at all, but I don't know if you utilize that or not in your services. I apologize. Yeah. If you, yeah. No, we, we offer some of that, but primarily we're doing calling and emailing. I mean, we can do that as an ancillary service, but our expertise is calling, but you know, and, and email prospecting. So that's something that we do offer as a, as a service, but not as many folks are choosing that these days. We're really the, the calling and emailing is our expertise. Because that's what works best business to business. Because you yeah, got to get to the decision maker, you got to be able to warm them up before you make the call. This is the problem. If you make the call without warming them up, they're going to say, "Give me your contact information, emailing." So I worked uh, working for a company involving marketing with a company called Lensec, and I learned firsthand having to go back uh, to do it, making those calls as an inside sales rep. And I saw as a director of inside sales for North America, I learned, man, if you don't know how to get through the door, you're in trouble and you better warm them up so they understand your product or service, or you're going to spend so much time explaining who you are, where you're not going to say, Hey, I just got your email. I saw what you're about. Can I have a demo? Right. That's the process of warming people up before calling. Yeah, absolutely. And, and and to your point earlier, you know, like the, the, the list and data is is really important because when we reach out to these folks, you know, sometimes it is so, someone else in a new position and we have to ask like which department or who's in charge of a certain area. And we update that information as we go. And we make sure that because that quality is really important and that allows us to then find the right person and get into a conversation. And it's never about closing them on that first conversation with a decision maker. It's sparking interest you know, curiosity, and then selling on the next steps, right? So knowing a little bit about the product or service, but not too much because you don't want to have a pitch right there. It might kind of uh, blow up the opportunity too quickly. So unless they are open, say, I want a demo, then you do it. Yeah. But if not, you say, hey, I'm going to send you some more information. I'll be back in touch in a couple of days. And then you just go back in your li list and churn and burn, not, not churn and burn, but you know what I'm saying? I, I, I did the whole cold calling thing biggest challenge. And I think that's where the war, when it becomes a warm call, 
through, you had an email, it seems interesting, or they have at least know who you are. It's so important. And when you are a niche product or service, and this is why you got to contact Ryan. If you're niche and you can, and you have a high ticket, you know, price and certain thing, and you're having trouble of finding the right people, looks like you guys are the experts when it comes to this. And why did you call your name superhuman? What's the reason for superhuman prospecting? And I, and I, and I love the fact of you're the cold call CEO. But why superhuman? <laughs> why the name superhuman? Yeah, I like that. So there's several reasons. One is, you know, we have this cold call methodology called H to H sales scripts, or uh, human to human is the is is the acro acronym there essentially, and that's a really important part of the the base because you know, whether you're a salesperson or you're a buyer you're still a human and you need to tr respect the other person's position. If you're a salesperson, you, you shouldn't be swindling and being aggressive. But if you're, a, if you're a buyer, you know, you should be respectful of the salesperson's role. And we're trying to send that message a little bit. Um, and so there's that basis behind everything, but also superhuman is also the age of AI and digital marketing, right? Digital marketing, AI automation, you know, really people are what make a connection with somebody else. You know, you're selling yourself and, that human connection is what a lot of times sparks the beginning of a business relationship, even in an age with chat GPT and all this automation going on, it's, uh, it's still super critical. And it's all about how well the human can adapt and meet the needs of the person that they're speaking to. So I think that super kind of adds on to kind of compete with that chat GPT and, and AI um, and but adds that human element so that there's a trust level that people have innately with speaking with other humans. Well, human relationships, the key, where can people yeah. find information? Because again, I think that what you offer is something that's so needed for any business, especially if we're looking at a high ticket item, meaning not high ticket, you know what I mean? There's gonna be bigger yeah. contracts, bigger situations. And if you're the CEO or up when you're doing some of these things right now, you need to give Ryan a call. Where, where's best, check out your website's best place. Yeah. Yeah, superhumanprospecting.com. I post a lot on LinkedIn about, you know, the industry, cold calling. Uh, also, YouTube, we do a lot of videos. So I would say LinkedIn, YouTube, and superhumanprospecting.com. We appreciate it, Ryan. It was great information. Thank you. Yeah, take care. You're listening and watching The Neil Haley Show, and we'll be back in just a moment.